Well, I guess firstly, just to touch on the news from yesterday, Will Jordan gone for the season. How much of a colossal loss is he? Well, you've probably labelled it a colossal... Well, you have labelled it a colossal loss. Yes, he's massive. Um, for a number of reasons. World-class player, massive influence on the group. Um, really disappointing for the competition as a whole because he is such a... Um, uh, character within the game and somebody that brings punters to watch. Um, yeah, so massive loss across all parts of the game. Um, so it's a shoulder injury. Can you just confirm when it happened? So it was like, it's pre-existing from last year, is it? Yeah, it's probably a bit longer than that. It's been managed for a year or two. Uh, and yeah, my understanding is it's just got progressively worse. Um, it may have been a little... Um, uh, issue during the World Cup where it got uh, aggravated once again and then um, I guess the, the conservative management component uh, wasn't as effective as, as we would have hoped and uh, yeah so he's had the repair done. How do you plan to utilise him um, away from being on the paddock? Yeah well he's in uh, you know he's uh, our leadership group and has a large role in that so along with a couple of other lads that have had a longer term injuries, um, he, you know, he'll be an important part to, I guess, ensure that our rugby stuff and our off-field stuff is, is continuing along in a crusader way. The other big name I noticed missing is Ethan Blackadder. Can you just let us know what's to go with him? Yeah, he's uh, had another little calf incident, which is unfortunate for the big guy. Um, yeah, he's eager as to get himself back onto the uh, the pitch, and it's just just not happening at the moment for him. But hopefully, within the next month, um, we'll be able to get him back, and uh, he'll be able to contribute. Some big first up blows for you, Rob. How are you feeling about it, especially with that injury ward with some big names in it? Yeah, but I guess a little bit of grey hair helps uh, dealing with these issues. Been there before. Um, you know, I remember. 20 years ago with Canterbury, we, we were getting near the end of the, uh, to the business end and, and we lost some big um, contributors and, uh, and you just got to back the guys that you've got underneath, have faith in them um, and I'm really excited about the young ones that are, that are going to step into the void um, uh, and their contribution will be, be really exciting and hopefully you know, in a few weeks time they become household names, they may not be well known right now, but you know, they'll, they'll um, uh, be well known to everybody by the end of the campaign, I'm sure. And just lastly for me for now, obviously Chiefs on Friday night, one of the biggest rivalries in Super Rugby. How are you feeling about facing the powerhouse that is the Chiefs first up? Very excited. Um, the reason being, um, it's a, it's a bit of a line in the sand for us really. Uh, you, you know, you've alluded to the fact that this isn't the same team as last year. And uh, the you know the Chiefs are, are touting it as a bit of a grudge match, a bit of a rematch of the final. Um, we're not going there because it's not. It's this is a new season, a new group, and um, it's an opportunity for our group, this this team, the 2004 version, 24 version, to um, I guess um, see where they're at, and uh, no better way than Hamilton on a on a Friday night round one. Can you talk us through that? Well, he's, he's done everything really uh, superbly for us uh, in the pre-season. Him and, and Taha are both outstanding young men, uh, great leadership qualities and great skill sets. Rivers obviously has a little bit more maturity and a little bit more, I guess, experience at this level. Um, and uh, there'll be opportunity for both of them going forward, but we've just, as you say, we've, we've given the nod to Rivers at this point and um, you know, he's grasped it with both hands over the last 10 days or so and, and really led the group well, so we're excited about what he's going to provide us at 10. What's, what's the clear instruction for him? Is it, you know, I guess you don't, you don't want him to try and be Richie Moong or anything, it's, it's just to, to be his, himself and, and steer the team around the park? Yeah, exactly. Good advice. Um, he, um, he's just got to be himself, as you say. Um, he's, co he's really competent um, and he'll He'll add the value to to us by being himself, you know, not trying to be a miracle worker or try to do too much. Um, he's got 
outstanding players around them and it's, it's about the sum total of the parts being greater than the individuals. So that's where his value will be. You hinted at it last week, but Shea Fihaki uh, opportunity first up at, at 15. I recall even this very fixture last year with, with Will out. Um, he, he started at fullback as well. How, how big a chance is, is this for Shea? Well, it's a great opportunity for him. I think last year Dave Harvelli played it, went back to fullback for that first game here. So, um, yeah, Shea's been impressive. Uh, what an athlete and someone that um, we're, we're really excited about. He's uh, you know, been well touted as having a lot of potential, but we all know potential is only valuable when it's realised. And he's, he's coming to that point in his career where He's got an opportunity and his confidence and belief is at a stage where we're, we're very hopeful that he'll be one of the standouts on the weekend. And just lastly from the, the team side, uh, Tamati Williams at, at tight heads. Um, is, is Fletcher Newell, can you talk, did he take a knock last Yeah, week? yeah. He did unfortunately, got a bit of, uh, bit of fire from the Highlanders game and um, so he's had to go through the protocol process which has ruled him out for this week. Tamati being able to play both scrums there, like obviously Owen Franks on the bench, but you yeah. think it's an easy enough decision? Yeah, yeah. What a man Tamati is, being able to cover both sides very efficiently um, and loves it to be able to do that and, uh, yeah, invaluable to us. Rodney McAllister and Oani, Moan Oani were both hurt in that preseason game too. What's, what's the go with them? Was Chest with Oani, was it? And, and Knee with Brody, what's the update? I, mean, I see you brought in Quinton McConnell. Yeah, that's right. Um, Ioane's probably maybe a week or 10 days or maybe three weeks. It's one of those um, injuries where we just have to be guided by the symptoms. Brody's probably a little longer. Um, he's uh, getting some specialist advice around a, an unusual little knee injury. Nothing really major, but it may take four weeks or so for him. So yeah, we've had to bring in some, some extra cover. Um, and we're just lucky with the calibre of people we're able to bring in with Quinton um, and Heidi coming in to add, give us a wee bit more depth in the hooker position in the short term. Will you be bringing in some cover outside backs with balls injury as well? Yeah, yeah, we're going through that process. Um, looking hard, we've got to just make sure the mix is right uh, and the calibre of the people that come in are, are appropriate fit for us. And um, yeah, we'll be working through that process next 10 days or so. Murray, someone that you'd look at potentially this year, I and mean, he was someone who was going to be around for a while, wasn't he, with Braden's and Drew Well, he now stuck around for the USP Yeah, year. there's a number of names in the mix. Blair's one of them, yeah. We're, um, uh, you know, the cupboard's not bare, so, you know, that'll be made clear in the next 10 days or so. A bit of time's gone by since you started in August here. It just for you, Rob, personally, to finally the first games come along, how have you, I guess, will there be some different emotions this week that it's finally come around this first game? Yeah, no different ones really, more more just the excitement of getting the group out on the field and, and uh, unleashing them and allowing them to, I guess, uh, you know, get into the contest and as I said before, just a bit of a, a line in the sand tells us where we're at. Um, there's nothing like the contest to, to highlight areas of growth needed and, and areas in which we're bloody good at and proud of and we can, um, you know, maintain and protect. So. That's that's where I'm at in terms of this first week. Um, you know, the, it's certainly we know it's competition week. There's a little bit of um, intensities ratcheted up, and um, you know, the no bigger test than Friday night. I just see last week Coffee World with uh, Lee Halfpenny. I saw on Instagram he's back over with his family now. What's like, what kind of role will he play with the team given his injury and he won't be back for some time? Like, what is he going to do to help and bring that wealth of knowledge mm. back? To yeah, great question. We've we've got a big pool of players that are going to join the coaching staff at the moment, as you alluded. Uh, yeah, they'll be they'll be busy. Lee, um, his his strength and one of the reasons we we really like the idea of bringing him out was his expertise on particularly backfield cover and defensive uh, edges, which is a sounds simple, but it's a, it's a bit of a, a nuance that. The Northern Hemisphere teams do really well and um, we're going to use him to help educate our, our back three in that aspect of play in particular. And um, because it's a bicep injury, he's still able to be mobile and on, on the grass. And um, so he, as soon as he's 
out of the sling, he'll be um, he'll be utilised fully as a part of the coaching staff until he's back towards the back end of the the pool section. Just one other selection, I'm at Don, Don Gardner at, at six, and obviously there's Christian Leo Willie there on the bench as well. But with Ethan out, how much of a tussle is it there for, for that uh, blindside flank spot? Yeah, blessed with the talent we have. Um, Dom and Christian are both outstanding young men and young rugby players, and there'll be opportunity for them both. And um, uh, you know they have fa fantastic futures in front of them. And you, you take a, a wonderful rugby player like Ethan Blackadder out of the mix, and you sort of go, oh, a lot of teams would be struggling to cover that. And as you say, we've got two fantastic young men covering uh, that area. Um, so we're blessed in there um, and there'll be opportunity for them both uh, and it's yeah it's an exciting part of the group that we have in our loose forwards really um, we've got lots of different combinations we can play dependent on opposition and how the strategy we want to use so that'll unfold as the season goes on.